On any given day in the emergency room of Angel Memorial Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, the staff might handle everything from minor cuts to cardiac arrests. But at Angel Memorial, patients often arrive in a box and leave on a leash. This story is not a recreation. May 27th, 1995. John Mark Mallory arrives with his two and a half year old cat, Joker, who fell out the window. Super Dave. How far up? I had it on the third floor. Third floor? Joker was standing on the ledge. I looked away for literally half a second. I looked back and the cat was just gone. A big lump down here on her abdomen. Veterinarian Warren Fleming tries to examine the cat. Joker was very serious about me not restraining him. He certainly did not appreciate what we were trying to do for him. His abdominal wall certainly does look like it's disrupted. Dr. Fleming reviews Joker's preliminary x-ray with a hospital's radiologist. More on the left side. Help to do a VD? I'm just not sure we're going to get one. Well, maybe he's calmed down now. You want some help? Sure. Okay. What she really needs is drugs. <laughs> the doctors wait for the anesthetic to take effect before trying to x-ray Joker again. It's not that bad. <laughs> I'd like to sedate her further. Well, the left side of the body wall is disrupted, and it looks like the spleen actually might be out there. Definitely a hernia. Surgeon Janet Welch is brought in to perform the operation. Okay, Chuck. Oh, okay. This is his whole hernia right there. Yeah. Pottery hooked up. Thanks. So it's a pretty good sized hernia in here. About two inches all the way around. Part of his stomach was in there too. If the blood supply to any organ is cut off, which it can be when it's in a hernia, they can become toxic and very, very ill very quickly. Hi, Joker boy. How you doing? Is this a good boy? He's waking up feeling a little feisty. I'm go back to sleep. Oh, there he is. The next day, John Mark comes to see how Joker is doing. Oh, you're not happy to see me, are you? You're mad at me. Uh, oh, that's a purr. We have a purr. Like you don't know how much you miss them until, like, they're not there at the door meowing for you when you come home. Like, oh, no one's here to say hi to me. May 30th, Evan Hoffman and his father, Corky, bring in their four-year-old pet goose, Sylvie. I really wanted a dog, but my dad, he's always been allergic to dogs. So we got ducks and geese, and we love them. So what happened? Well, we need a gooseling specialist. Somebody, uh... My dad came to me and he said, uh, something's wrong with Sylvie. The wing on uh, uh, one of the geese uh, was uh, pulled uh, away from its body at some distance. And we took a close look at it, and it was just a mess. I saw there was a little blood there. It was just horrible. What a good goose. She definitely got into a fight with another animal. Is she it seems like. You're okay, sweetie. She's got a pretty significant wound over this wing. Uh, she's got muscle and tendons exposed. This should be surgically cleaned and closed. She would need to be under general anesthesia in order for us to do that. Girls still sometimes get a little bit excited when they first get anesthetized. You're okay, Pumpkin. All right, Sophie. Go down a bit. It sounds like she got herself in trouble somehow. The big concern with any bite wounds to any animal is when they do bite with their teeth, they're basically inoculating bacteria into the tissues of the animal. Hopefully, we can save Sylvie's wing. You're never quite sure what you're dealing with until. You know, you get in there and start cleaning things up and getting a better look at things. Just trying to gently clean it out without driving any infection into the tissues. 
there was much more tissue damage and more contamination than we had anticipated. Wounds pretty bad, much worse than I thought. If this joint is infected, then our main concern is that it doesn't spread to the rest of the body. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. The next day, Evan and Corky bring Sylvia a special visitor to help with her recovery. This is Bruno, Sylvia's uh, mate. Technically her brother, but they don't really care. The night that Sylvie was gone, uh, you, you could tell Bruno was lonely. He True. ran around the pen uh, looking for her. I think he had kind of a long day without her. The Hoffmans were concerned that Sylvie would not eat in the hospital, so they thought it would be best to bring Bruno in so they could keep each other company. Look who's there. <coughs> when they first saw each other, they were just so happy. They were really communicating. It certainly added some sounds that aren't commonly heard in our hospital. Lisa Bibbo and her mother, Roberta Doherty, bring in two-year-old Mittens, who is in labor. Okay. She couldn't deliver. She started at 9.30 this morning. When she didn't deliver anything, at least by 12, I knew something was up. I looked down, and I saw the tail hanging out, and I knew that you don't deliver tail backwards. And I said, if I didn't get her in here right away, she could die herself, along with the rest of the kittens. My husband, Paul, said to me, you're an EMT. Isn't there anything you can do to help her? And I said, well, you know, I work on humans. I, I've never done this before. Cats deliver on their own, usually. I didn't know what to do. Okay. Dr. Dave Cook takes over Mitten's care. We were looking at about 11 or 12 hours of labor without any progress. Given the cat had been in labor that long, we'd certainly worry about whether the kittens were alive or dead. OK, you see right in the middle of the screen there? It's kind of flashing. It's coming and going. It's kind of slow for a heartbeat, but that's kind of what we're looking for. It appeared to me that we at least had a sign of life, whether or not that kitten would still be alive by the time we got it out. That's a different question. These would be the options, giving her some oxytocin. Um, yeah. in, induced, basically. And uh, if that's not doing it, then we should consider surgery. They're all alive? And it looks like, at this point, at least the one that I was looking at showed signs of life. Dr. So, Cook was getting us ready for the so worst. He thought the kittens were not alive. We'll give her the oxytocin. Half an hour to an hour after that, we should know if that's done anything. Oh, God, I hope so. And, uh, see if, if that's had any effect. OK. I hope so. OK. Oh, God. The 30 minutes on the second injection hasn't completely elapsed, but she's working pretty hard without any further progress. So I'd say at this point, it, it's definitely surgical. Oh, God. I had to make another decision whether to let her go or to go through with the surgery. I just can't believe it. Why is it not working? She just can't deliver them, that. No. It was a lot of money, but the cat meant so much to me that I was going to find a way to go through with it to save her life. I needed to make sure that I brought her home. She was that much more fatigued than she was when she came in. This cat was definitely in a critical situation. After 15 hours of labor with little or no progress, surgeon Mark Roberts is brought in to do an emergency cesarean section. My major concern is that as each minute passes by, that we're potentially losing kittens. ICU supervisor Lori Cordaro is also a member of the surgical team. You want to get those kittens out as quick as you can so that they're under anesthesia for as short a time as possible. Okay, are we ready for your... Yeah. Okay, we're going to do this two at a time. Once you get them, you really have to stimulate them, and it's not a pretty sight. It looks like we're really roughing these kittens up, but you've got to literally shake that mucus out of their airway and hopefully get them breathing and a good heartbeat going. Come on, little guy, keep breathing. Okay. 
We had two that we were really worried about that they were very slow. Atropine will stimulate the heart, give it stronger contractions, and Dopram will help their breathing come along more rapidly. That's what we were giving them just to help them along. He's breathing. He's breathing. He's got a good heart and he's breathing. Great. You don't want to lose these little things. They're depending on you. You're the only one there to help them live. Oh, this guy's getting pink. Keep okay. rubbing him. Oh, this guy's coming. This is the rewarding part of doing this day to day. There we go. It's a great feeling. Looks as though uh, we were successful. Mom is doing real well here. I expect a complete recovery. Uh, we need to obviously wake her up, get those kittens to start nursing. We've got five hungry kittens over there. Oh my goodness. Oh, I thank you. Look at this one. My heart just dropped. I was so happy that she was alive, but then her kittens had made it too. Mittens and her kittens were coming home with me. I'm going to keep them all. Oh. While Joko recovers at home, John Mark takes steps to prevent another accident. I know it sounds relatively unintelligent, but I really didn't think that my cat would jump. He probably saw a bird or something in a tree below him that he was interested in and just went for it, not thinking that in the process he was going to bounce off the concrete. Just put screens in the window and watch them because they get into everything and then some. Joker is definitely a cat with attitude, but that one little face, no matter what, comes up to you and goes, oh, I love you, I love you, oh, you're the best because you came home again and you might even feed them if they're lucky. Six days after her surgery, Sylvie's wing continues to heal at home. Ainge Memorial, whenever we have a Dr. Goose that's injured like that, we always take him in there. It's just miraculous what they can do. There's some injuries like the one that Sylvie had you simply cannot take care of by yourself. I think she would have uh, become infected and died if we had tried to treat that at home. It probably would have uh, meant the end of uh, Sylvie and a, and, a, and a very lonely Bruno. Really? Mittens and her five kittens have completely recovered. I had all intentions of getting her spayed and the children opened the door and let Mittens out. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> My advice to cat owners would be to try to get it spayed and neutered as soon as possible because there is a chance of the cat getting pregnant as early as five months. A lot of people say it's only a cat, it's only a cat. Well, that cat is like my fourth grandchild. <laughs> and now we have the kittens with mittens. <laughs> Many areas around the country cannot afford to pay for full-time rescue personnel and must rely on volunteers trained to respond to emergencies. Find out how you can get involved and make a difference in your community. This series is dedicated to all the men, women, and children who know what to do when an emergency occurs. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next time for more true stories on Rescue 911. Hello, I'm Dan Rather. Coming up on an all-new 48 Hours. Did you ever abuse these children? We show you a world you've never seen before. <laughs> Meet the men and women charged with protecting children. It's never easy to take children into custody. But does the system always work? Find out on 48 Hours, next. This is CBS.